in ESO, there are two types of builds. There are either top banana builds or there are chimp chum builds. And I am hopefully gonna make your chimp chum build into a top banana stamp sort build. Top banana build, you say? Let's take a look at that montage. All right, cool beans. Hope you guys enjoyed that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm gonna be going over a Stam Sork build. Yes, yeah, been a while since I posted, but just wanted to wait for the new patch, testing so many new things out, getting new sets, few IRL stuff, but I'm back. Don't you worry about that, but enough of me. Let's get to the build. This build comes with the standard meta, you know, tankiness, meta sustain, but honestly, what this build excels at is the damage. I have never had crazy bursts with the Stam Sork before. This build just did so much damage. They're, we're just absolutely bursting people into oblivion and it's so easy to set up the burst too. Before we get started, I just wanna ask one question. Is it just me or does damage just seem way too high? I'm getting hit way too hard this patch. Is it the light attack buff or is everyone just playing super scummy this patch? I don't know. Am I going crazy? Please, please leave your comments down below. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe and like button. It really does go a long way and I greatly do appreciate it. Also leave a comment what you wanna see next. But without further ado, let's crystal weapons our way into the build. All right, let's go over the OP skills. No, I'm kidding, just regular old skills. First skill we do run is, I would say is our flex spot. Just because of that emergency, like, oh fudge shield, that's it. Can burst heal is really good. Also, grass is a nice minor stam recoat. We do have a cheesy healing set, which pretty sure most of you can already tell what cheesy heal set is out there, but if you wanted the most possible damage on this build, you could slot Camo Hunter, especially if you're in a group. But I just like having that old emergency heal. Next, we do run a streak. When you think of Sork, you think of streak. Teleport instantly, stuns you for three seconds, and it's not blockable. I don't know why it stuns for so long, unblockable, but whatever. And it actually can do some pretty good damage if it crits. Next, we do run Executioner. This is basically just our execute. You know, the lower health they are, the harder we hit, and trust me. And they're low health and we crit a <laughs> good night. Next we do run is crystal weapons. This thing is the bread and butter burst for stamp sort. Making your next light attack do bonus damage and the one after that reduces their armor and gives you a slight form of like sustain. Next skill, you can go either one wrecking blow or dizzying swing. I tried both and honestly, they both have their pros and cons. If you're going for the easy burst combo of just crystal weapons, dizzying swing, light attack into a Dawnbreaker execute spam, then obviously Wrecking Blow, 100% Wrecking Blow will do the job. But if you like to 1VX and like have this, you know, because Wrecking Blow doesn't have the snare and the CC that Disney Swing has. And honestly, I had slept on that for so long. I did not know how powerful that was. So either one's fine, but it's obviously Wrecking Blow, easiest combo. Next skill for ultimate, obviously we run Dawnbreaker Smiting. This ultimate is, I'm just gonna say, it's the best universal ultimate in the entire game very cheap hits really hard but most importantly stuns the target and if they can survive the tail of the dawnbreaker combo well that dot's for sure gonna put them six feet under for our back bar we do run race against time obviously this is just our snare meeting this happens to grab major expedition and minor force like okay <laughs> pretty much mandatory on every class next we do run hurricane this is our armor buff that just that actually can do a sizable amount of damage but most importantly grass is minor expedition permanently while we have this up 15% move speed, that's crazy. Next, we do run Resolve and Vigor. Obviously, this is our burst hot. Heal a lot over five seconds. And honestly, we can get this thing to a pretty high total to like 25K to keep. Like, And most important, grants minor resolve. Like, okay. Next, we do run Dark Guild. This is the bread and butter for our sustain. This is what makes our low sustain seem like God tier sustain. We convert our magic into stam. We net stam, we heal, and we get more stam over time. Like. Just a crazy skill. Just be careful. If there are a lot of crushing shock people out there, 
this thing is very very volatile because if you get crushing shocked and you're running away it's gonna stun you and you're gonna get pulled back into the zerg and it, it, <laughs> ah good times good times <laughs> Next skill we do run is Ellie Sus. Even with the nerf, it's still really good. The whole point is it grants major breach, almost 6k pen. It's free, but most importantly, puts chilled, concussed, and burning for four seconds. The most important thing is it puts chilled, which if we have an ice staff to quit, which we do have, when you put chilled on a target, you put minor brittle on them, making them take 10% more damage from crits. And for our back bar ultimate, I do run Temporal Guard, just for the passive. Minor protection while slaughtered. I mean, why not? All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the stat sheets now. So for this build, there are two stat sheets. There is the advanced stat sheets and the, you know, newer beginner friendly. The easier play style, which is less crit, but more sustain, or the more advanced play style with higher crit, but way less sustain. So we're gonna be going over the more easier sustain one. Max mag at 15K, max health at 30.6K. This can go up to 31K if you do use or Zaka Smoke Bear Hodge, we are using Jewel of the Misrule. Max Stam is at just shot 24k. Mag Recup, almost 1300. And Stam Recup, well, this thing fell. 1418, might not seem like much, but you have to realize we're a Sork with Dark Deal. So our sustain is really, really dependent on our Mag Recup. So our spell damage is at 5138. And our spell crit, let's just proc our Mind Prophecy. We're at 34.8. This can go up depending on what pot you use. If you use the tripods like I have right now, this is 34.8, but if you are the god tier sword, like sustain is not an issue. So you can run the spell pots with crit and boost this up to like 46.8% crit. The only problem is sustain is a little rough, so this is the easier combo. Our physical and spell pen might look low, but we do have access to major breach, potential minor breach, and most importantly, battle orgs. We have battle orgs on this build, which I'll get to more into the end. All right, but now we're going to be going over the advanced playstyle, the ones that with high crit but very low sustain. For those that truly want to push the limits of Stam Sork and the recovery, this is the way. We would slot the spell pots from PvP, grant to spell damage and spell crit. So there you go, pop that. And our crit goes up, to, whoops, for our Mining Prophecy. Our crit can go up to 46.8. This thing hit like an absolute truck. I was creating so much. The only problem is you do have to dark deal a lot with this build. You really do have to commit to the dark deals. But if you're okay with committing to dark deals and knowing when to weave and knowing when to weave heavies, this is the perfect build for you. But if you're more of a beginner or want an easier build, I would highly recommend tripods. But let's just check up our resist on our back bar real quick. Spell resist at 31K and our physical resist is over 30K. Hello, and our crit resist at 2506. Yeah, we're super tanky on this build. I do have 10 points in health and 54 points in stamp. If you want, you could put like an extra 10 points in health or an extra 20 points in health, up to you. For the food, I do run Jewels of Mystery. Obviously you could run Orzakas. I'm just saying purple food is perfectly fine. I use it all the time and it was working perfectly fine. For the Monus, I do run the Thief. I felt like the Thief was perfect for this build since we are benefiting more from our pots into Rico. Obviously we are a stage three vampire just for one simple, simple passive. Undeath. The lower health we are, the tankier we become. And this thing can scale pretty high. Under 25% health, we're taking over 20% less damage. And for my race, obviously I am an Imperial. Hands down, in my opinion, the best open world stam race you can be out there. Tough, increases your max health by 2k, the most max health you can have from a racial passive. Imperial Metal, 2k stam, most importantly, Red Diamond. 6% cost reduction to everything. Regular abilities, ultimates, and from what I've seen, it also reduces the cost of CC break, roll dodge, and blocking, which is amazing. Obviously, some great alternatives could be Khajiit. Khajiit would be perfect for this build, or it could be really good. What else could maybe be pretty good too? The other ones I would probably stay away. Maybe Nord could work actually, eh. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the sets now. All right, so for the first set we do run, we do run the greatest cheese of all, Mara's Bomb. I only wear Mara's Bomb when it is absolutely necessary. If I can get away without it, I will not use Mara's Bomb. But on this build, I just, Sam Slurk, I just needed Mara's Bomb. I don't know what it is right now, this patch, but people are just doing so much damage right now. Sam Slurk, the only problem was our healing was a little sus with Mara's Bomb. Throws that, you know, sus out of the window. Our healing is great. I mean, we sacrifice very little damage. I tried so many sets. I tried Essence Thief. I tried Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry was good. Like, if you're in a group, really good. Especially if you can have someone that can heal you, really good. 
But if you're truly 1vx in Mara's bomb, 100%. You, we can like we can get a potential small hunt, but most importantly, as long as Ma has that cleanse and we heal for everything we cleanse, and it's on a 15 second cooldown, Mars bomb will never go anywhere. For our monster set, we do run Ballards. Obviously, on this build, we do need penetration, and this is how we get it. And it just happens to give us weapon to spell damage equal to our ultimate spend. And we all know the 500 Ballards, over you know 500 weapon to spell damage, and over 11k pen. So we do run one piece training because this is a meta front bar back bar with the mythic why one piece training because we do have one slot available so why not slot training the most max health for one piece and obviously we do run a mythic and what mythic is that you can pretty much just help from the picture mark and ring of majesty like this ring is honestly super simple and really good like if you have not got this mythic please just farm it you will not regret it with this setup we get 200 weapon and spell damage and over 2300 armor just free. Here you go. Don't have to think. No downside. And for our front bar set, do run Order's Wrath. Order's Wrath on this build was really, really nuts. And look at that. I mean, look at this. Crit, weapon and spell damage, crit, even a bigger line of crit, and another passive because, you know, OP sets have to have two five pieces. Increases our critical damage, critical healing by 8%, which is pretty cool. Our rallies on this bar, too. So the way we run it, I do run a Battle Axe of Order's Wrath with Sharpen with an Absorb Stam Enchant. Battle Axe hits really, really hard. We do run an Absorb Stam Enchant, you know, great sustain, but mostly importantly can proc Minor Breach and Sharpen because in PvP, Penetration is king. If you want, you could go, I did try out Precise versus Sharpen. For the back bar, we do run a Mars Bomb Ice Staff. Please make it an Ice Staff. The whole point is Ellie Sus with an Ice Staff, Minor Brittle. We do run an Onslaught Enchant. The way to make this is a Tade Haikejo Kudas. And we do run Defending because tankiness is next to godliness. For the body, we do run the typical 3 3 1. 3 heavy, 3 medium, 1 light. For my heavy, I do run a heavy head of Balorx and a heavy chest and feet of Mars Bomb. And for my medium, I do run a medium legs and hands of Order's Wrath and a medium shoulders of Balorx. And for my 1 light, I do run a sash of Order's Wrath. Now for the enchants, if you can't, try stat all the pieces. If you can't do that, try stat the big pieces. What I mean by that is head, chest, and legs. And if you can't do that, max damage is perfectly fine. Just adjust your health attributes at the end. For the traits, I do run one reinforced, six M pen. Yes, one reinforced, six M pen. The only reinforced is a heavy chest of Mars Bomb. Reinforced. Please make the heavy chest reinforced. It makes a difference. It's the most armor you can get. But obviously, if you think impen is a dead trait, you can obviously trait, change your traits. If you want reinforce on your heavy pieces, go ahead. You want some one flavor? Perfect. That's what I like about builds. We fit to our playstyle. Now for the jewelry, we do run a Mars Bomb Neck, Ring of the Training, and a Mark and Ring of Majesty. All infused, all with the weapon and spell damage enchants. If you can, go all three Stam Recuff. I had completely forgotten I had ran one with Mag Recuff. Just shows that you don't have to have the perfect, you know, enchants. So the way to make these is Ripora, Tadari, and Kuda. And for our food, like I said earlier, we do run Jewels of Misro. Obviously, if money isn't an issue, or Zaku's Smoke Bear Haunch is the best. 400 more health and a little bit more recov. But obviously, purple food is perfectly fine. For the pots, obviously, if you are using the more beginner-friendly, easier build, tripods, 100% tripods, good sustain for everything. But if you are a true Sork veteran, you say you're the best Sork ever, sustain is not an issue. You could go spell pots to get 12% more crit if you are running Camel Hunter. The only problem is your stance sustain will be a little rough. So if you're used to just dark dealing a lot and like just playing off that, perfect. All right, but enough of that, let's go over the CP now. All right, for the blue CP, we do run Fighting Finesse. Increases the critical damage, critical healing. Focus many. increases our healing done with single target heals. Master at Arm, increases our damage done with direct damage attacks. And Iron Clef, reduces our damage taken from direct damage attacks. If you are deciding you don't want to run Wrecking Blow and you like to stun from Dizzy and Swing or the Snare, then I would honestly, then obviously you would you would use Exploiter instead of Master at Arms. Boom, there. So that's if you want to use Dizzy and Swing, because trust me, that CC and Snare was, I had taken that stuff for granted. But if you are running Wrecking Blow, then Master at Arms all day. For the red CP, we do run the typical red hex CP. Celerity increases our movement speed by 10%. Honestly, in my opinion, the best CP in the entire game. Survival instincts, while well, with the status effect, your core combat skills cost up 25% less. 
Relentlessness, being stunned or fear, grants you major protection for 3 seconds. And Pain's Refuge. Reduces our damage taken by 2% for every 2 negative effects active on us, up to a max of 20%. And for the green CB, I mean, doesn't ever really matter. Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Seed's Blessing. But alright, cool beans, that's the build. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Honestly, Stam Slurk, it felt good. Damage is a little insane right now, so I felt like Maros was necessary. You could go Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry was really good, but like when you get pressured really hard this patch, I don't know what it is. Maybe Xbox NA is just a bunch of scum blades right now hitting you with the scavenger to mice to fire other builds. But to be honest, I only put Mars Bomb when it's absolutely necessary, okay? In this build, sadly, Stam Slurk's healing is a little sus. With Mars Bomb, we were able to get away with that. But as always, I hope you guys did enjoy the build video. Like the video if you liked it. Comment your thoughts or experience with the build. Also, anything I might have missed out, what videos I should do next. Subscribe for more, but most importantly, stay zerging.